The London Jingun Opera Association has been performing authentic Peking opera across the UK for almost eight years. To achieve such gracefulness on stage requires much skill and precision. Every performance requires a lot of preparation for what is known as the national essence of China, the Peking Opera. There, there are four elements in Chinese opera. We call Chang Nian Zuo Da, yeah, so singing, rec recitation, because even the, the dialogue is spoken in a musical fashion. Yeah. And then there is uh, Zuo, is movements, and then Da is acrobatics. People usually train in only one category, and that's your category for life. Kevin Zhang was only six years old when he began training for the male role called Sheng. There are four main roles in Peking opera. Sheng, the male role, Dan, the female role, Zheng, the painted face role, and Chao, the clown role. And within each of these roles, there are other smaller roles. It can take a lifetime to master a single role. Dan has female roles. Of course, in the old days, um, all the female roles played by men for the dance. So much softer than the, than the sheng, of course. If you do young male role, you've got most, much stronger ones, like, a, like this. Okay. And sheng uh, dan jing, that's a face painted role. Those characters, they always, uh, how to say, they, they got a very um, special personality. Chou, we try use natural voice, but mix some falsetto voice, why? To make sounds silly or funny. That's chou, uh, clowns, they do. Uh, such like, ah ha, ni shuo ni gong dao, wo shuo wo gong dao. The language of Peking opera originated from the dialects of the Hubei and Anhui provinces of China. The audience, including native Chinese, will not understand what performers are singing unless subtitles are used. Here's Kevin and Kathy performing. Kevin, who's wearing purple, runs his own business, but contributes most of his spare time to promoting this traditional art form. This association is the only one in London that promotes authentic Peking opera and its members are doing all they can to preserve this ancient cultural treasure. It is so rich. It is also the ba it really is the, the basis of, of Chinese culture, you can say, because in it you can see Chinese painting as well. You can see Chinese calligraphy. It's all the sort of symbolic. This art form dates back several hundreds of years and since the 18th century the Peking Opera has been regarded as an elite art form performed only by China's best. Here's renowned Peking Opera master Milan Fang performing. The, the origin is really from um, say in, uh, performing in front of temples where people put on a mask because you are the medium between the gods and the people. But today, competition from pop culture is making the Peking Opera less popular among younger generations. The association has a workshop. Ting Hoying, an exchange student from Hong Kong, has just joined, hoping to reacquaint with her culture. I get a bit detached from, um, from so-called the culture of my motherland, you know. So actually I was hoping to take this opportunity to re at, um, to refamiliarize or to just to know more about these um, precious things that is part of me but not really a part of me at, at the same time. These workshops also attract Westerners interested in Peking opera. I used to be an actor before I came here and I did study Western drama for a very long time and was um, part of the Royal Shakespeare Company and I've always had an interest in China so when I kind of studied Chinese I I started looking at the theatre as well because that's what my other background was in. So it's kind of just like culminated all in Chinese opera. Among Western members here at London University's Oriental Studies Room, the Peking Opera has become a favourite pastime. But it's more than that for some. This is a great chance for me to learn some of these pieces and to try to play in an um, operatic ensemble, which I 
never done before. They aren't the only ones who see the value of preserving this cultural jewel. The Arts Council England has funded specific projects of the London Jinkun Opera Association, but the core finance comes from the members themselves and the workshops they hold. Despite the fervent efforts to save this unique cultural form, young Chinese people everywhere have little interest in the Peking Opera. It's sometimes like a bit hard to understand. I never go to any performance actually. So you're not interested in that? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Beijing Opera? No, sorry. Nothing? Nope. I never enjoy that. It's a bit boring. Kevin isn't very worried. I'm not expecting you know, Chinese opera uh, just like 60 or 50 years ago is popular. Everyone knows, everyone has seen a little bit. No, that, that's the history. It's gone. But I don't do anything to save Chinese opera. I know Chinese opera will carry on. Kathy is convinced that the best way to promote Peking opera among the younger generations is to show them what it's all about. Kevin and Kathy come to life in brilliant costumes. Here, Kathy's in pink, along with Kevin, dramatizing the ancient Chinese story of the startling dream, a tale of a young lady searching for the man in her dreams. The London Jinkun Opera performers feel assured that this dynamic cultural form has found a new home in London. It's a start by the Salon Association, which has planted a small seed in a foreign land with hopes that this Eastern art form will be well preserved and assimilate into Western culture.